Hello, and we are live. Thank you so much for joining uh, us today. My name is Nadia, and this is another one in the series of my interviews that I am uh, holding regularly every week with people who have received the Global Talent Visa for the UK. Um, and let us know in the chat let us know in the chat um, where you're joining us from. Um, we do have a chat, so if you have questions about any of the things that we're discussing today, make sure to ask them there. Also, if you're interested in the topic of the Global Talent Visa and in general immigrating to the UK, make sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel. There will be more videos like this and also explainer videos coming up in the future. I do have uh, an interview scheduled for October 4th with a designer who also received the Global Talent Visa. So if this is something that you would like not to miss, then make sure to subscribe. And also, if you're watching this video, make sure to hit like. This does help um, YouTube algorithms like my videos more and show them to more people in the future. So with that out of the way, uh, I'm pleased to welcome Harsha today, who is my guest, who is a technical program manager at Meta, who was endorsed for the Global Talent Visa in uh, 2016. Uh, welcome. Uh, could you tell us a little bit about yourself, where you're from, and how long have you been living in London? Yeah, sure. Uh, thanks, thanks, Nadia, for the warm welcome. Uh, happy to be here. Uh, yeah, about myself. Um, I've, I've been living in London for the last seven years. I, I came here in 2016, um, uh, in the early part of 2016. So it's just, I, I would say uh, over six plus years, nearing seven years here in, in, in London. About my background, I'm, I'm from India. Uh, I did my uh, engineering degree from, from India, uh, from a university called Iser University. Um, I graduated uh, with electronics and communication from uh, Mysore University. I also did my master's there, um, and and I did have a decent amount of uh, stint in India. I worked with companies like HD Ericsson, um, uh, HD Ericsson, where I was mainly working on wireless protocols. Uh, I think uh, back in those days, uh, you know, we, we had something called 2G, 2.5G, 3G. I was working on those kind of protocols at the time. Now, now people are pretty much aware of what 4G and 5G is, but I think in, in the early part. Uh, early 2000, uh, right? I was, I was working, work, uh, writing those protocols. Later on, I moved towards um, digitizing this communication, which is basically you look at uh, moving from uh, a voice voice call to a voice over IP based calls. WhatsApp is basically a good example of what, what happens on a uh, digital call, which is data based call, uh, right? So I uh, worked a lot on those areas in Samsung. Uh, with Samsung, I was in um, South Korea. I spent quite a bit of years in South Korea, uh, South Korea, and also I would say US. I was uh, mainly in these two countries, uh, traveling a lot between these two countries. We uh, South Korea mainly because that was my that was the place I was uh, hired within Samsung, and US mainly because the phones that we were making was sold mostly in US. So I was uh, traveling between these two countries, uh, working on these. Uh, data, I mean, uh, moving from uh, voice calls to database calls, uh, multimedia communications, which includes internet radios, video on demand, YouTube is a good example. Now we can do live streaming, we are doing live streaming. So bringing those on the phones, I uh, did quite a bit of work uh, till I would say 2012, 2013 or so uh, with Samsung. Um, I later worked with a company called Bosch. Uh, Bosch is known for automotives. Uh, in Bosch, I worked in areas like telematics. I'm not sure if that rings any bell, uh, but but one thing that probably may interest some of the audience is connected cars. Uh, worked in area on connected cars and trying to see how and why a car should talk to another car, uh, right? I mean, and mm. why, when should a car talk to the infrastructure? What kind of data can be sent? Uh, how can we ensure that uh, the safety of the car is is also uh, managed or controlled through through these uh, connected cars or internet of cars or connected cars? So a few few talks I've given previous, uh, on those areas. When I was in Bosch um, and Bosch, I was traveling a bit with bit in bit to Germany. Uh, I was in India. I was traveling to Germany and. And over this period of 10, 12, 13 years, I, I traveled a lot, worked between a few countries. Um, and then I was raising a family as well. Uh, so we decided, hey, I think that we need to 
look at a place where we can probably my, my wife is also working she's also an engineer so we were trying to see which is that place where we can think of hey uh, we can settle down schooling is good i have a kid um, and we both can work i mean we don't, i mean us is is of course a good option uh, the few options the few options that i got in us uh, but the, the the possibility of both uh, getting a job in the same place us is a big country Right, and um, so the the few ifs and buts which which I uh, looked at and then decided, hey, UK is, is, is a good option. And uh, another thing that actually clinched the deal towards UK is UK had introduced at that time, I think, I mean, just a year before, but it was not popular. But at the time, uh, it was just visa called. They used to call this as an exceptional talent visa, and they had an entrepreneurial visa and an exceptional talent visa. Uh, I think it, now it's called global talent visa. Um, mm -hmm. I, that was available. I ha had a look at it and then uh, thought, hey, this is a good option. Uh, and I took that route and came to UK. So that's my job. Amazing. <laughs> Amazing story. So much, uh, you know, so much to unpack here. You have traveled quite a lot. You have lived in the ver various places. Um, and it was curious to hear why you decided to come to the UK. I think that a lot of immigrants make very similar decisions because of similar reasons, because of how um, flexible immigration system here is. So, for instance, if one person in the family gets a job here, then the partner or spouse, they are able to get a work visa too, which is not the case everywhere. Um, the United States is kind of infamous for the fact that Sometimes they have work visas where just the person who's working has a right to work and the spouse is not allowed to do any kind of work at all. So there are various limitations there. And I think the UK is very flexible when it comes to that. And especially now since Brexit, uh, there are now more options and more visas to enable people from around the world to come here. So I think that this is something that not everybody realizes that how easy it actually has become to move to the UK after Brexit, like clearly not easy for, you know, much harder for people from the EU, but much easier for people from around the whole world. So um, so it was back in 2016 that you decided to apply for, for the, you know, we can call it global talent visa to not confuse people, but uh, it was just the, so you were among the first people who applied for it. Uh, I'm curious, how did you learn about it and what was the process like applying for it and preparing documents? Because even now you say that, you know, it wasn't as popular, but even now I would say that it is not quite as popular as people might think. So few people still apply for the visa and there is information online clearly, but there is still not that much. I would say that there is still uh, a lack of information on this visa. So what was it like for you when the visa was just starting out? Like, what was the process like? How did you get the information? Did you do it yourself? Or did you have some lawyers helping you? What was it like? Yeah, pretty, pretty good question. So, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm an engineer. So uh, I'm an engineer. I, uh, I love coding. I love, love technology. I, I love to build technology. So for an engineer, um who, who doesn't want to fail in, in in the projects and the programs that that, that i execute uh i i do i do all the due diligence that means uh when, when i looked at um the the visa and then i tried to see who can help me it became pretty clear hey it's pretty new uh, there are no lawyers and advocates who, who actually can help me i mean the only person who can help help in this case was me so i uh, that, that came out that decision came out pretty early um, and then I, I talked to a few. Uh, I, I think the this Tech UK uh, at that point of time, which is which is also called Tech City. I, I need to look at uh, what it is called now. Uh, I, I talked to them. Uh, there was also a couple of people who were um, who were actually very kind to respond back to emails. So I, I communicated to them over emails, trying to understand. Hey. What is it that I need to do? So I, I, I did not want to fail. So I, I, I mean, I, I have less time. I'm working in, uh, in a company and uh, um, do, um, I, I didn't want to fail. I, I wanted all the information. I talked to them. The information came out pretty, pretty well. Uh, it was usually one or two days, not more than that. So that helped my case. I uh, built my case. I try, I tried to understand what the need and then prepared my documents based on what the need. Um, one, one of the mistakes that many people do, not, not only in, in the application, but also in life is they want to say, hey, here, here I am. I'm so great. 
but the need for the job is something else. This pro probably says we want to know these these days. So if if a, if a Superman or Spiderman comes for the job, probably it may not be worthwhile. So we need somebody who is pr pretty good in doing A B C D. So which is the job requirement, right? Uh, so this is this is how I usually proceed. Um, I looked at what's needed. I try to really pinpoint my answers and the documentation, especially to those uh, needs that were mentioned um, in, in, in the visa. Uh, and I think there's an endorsement. There's a, there's, there is a process of endorsement. I think it's still there. The endorsement is, is the most important thing, um, really pinpointing what is needed. Uh, for example, uh, somebody might be an extraordinary in technology, yeah, but um, when we look at what uh, the requirements for uh, uh, for for the endorsement for a specific year, it says, "Hey, we need B, C, D, E." If 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 I had done B and C, um, even though I have, I'm really great in A, I will highlight my B and C work, not highlight more of A, because B and C is what is needed. And I have done some work on B and C, which needs to be highlighted. So these are the things which probably are. Um, minor things, but probably it plays a very important role. Um, so yes, that's that's how I prepared it. That's how I prepared the documents. There's a huge set of documents that we need. Uh, I think it, it includes uh, we need um, a reference letters. We need some kind of endorsements from uh, companies where we work with. Uh, we need to show hey why you are special, right? So these kind of things. Um, um, yeah, I think we need to prepare. Um, yeah, that's how I prepared. <laughs> yeah. So, did you uh, outside of reference letters? Did you also have uh, any kind of external proof, like publications, public speaking, open source, yeah. any of those things? Yeah, I had a few uh, publications, uh, which is basically papers. I had published a few papers in uh, some of the forums and conferences. Uh, that 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 was something that was helpful. Uh, and and there a few articles. I, I I was pretty good at writing few writing articles in some of the technical magazines and forums. So though those were good examples, I can I can bring them up and say, hey, these are the things that I've done. Um, and I've been trying to be part of startup forums in places where I've been, for example, in Bangalore in India, and there were one or two other places where I was traveling. Uh, so what does that mean is uh, I, I get to meet people, I get to understand what people are building. Um, if, if something is interesting, I say, hey, I want to get involved and probably uh, play some role of a mentor or, or uh, 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 probably uh, contribute a bit. So these are things that I did. Uh, there are some examples mm -hmm. I would highlight. Uh, I think that part was taken care of all, by all this, all this additional uh, work that I did. Mm, yeah, I think that that's how. Mm -hmm. it yeah, so you were active in the startup community. You were active online uh, with you know all of the things that you have done outside of your work. Uh, I think that here I always like to emphasize for people who are listening to this is that if you are early on in your career, for instance, uh, if you entered tech recently, or maybe if you entered tech a while ago, but you haven't really done any of those things uh, yet. So what I want you to take away from this is not to get discouraged and be like, oh my God, Nadia always have the, has this, you know, those amazing people um, in, their, in her interviews that have done all of those things. And yes, I do. Uh, so my all of my guests are very impressive, but I kind of want to, you to use this occasion to get inspired by what other people have done and not to get discouraged and dismiss your own success that you have had up to now. So just use these stories as an opportunity for you to get inspired, but also get ideas of what you can start doing, for instance, to become a better candidate for the global talent visa if you don't have the case yet. So uh, getting uh, involved with startups, I think, is a great idea. Then also um, public speaking, getting involved with tech communities, volunteering and helping others um, get into tech teaching and all of those things they can all help you bring a strong build a strong case for the visa uh, and also luckily right now uh, it's 2022 we do have quite a lot of information about the visa i'm hoping that my youtube channel will kind of be filling the gap in the information that exists but i imagine it was very different in 2016 uh, so um I, I actually didn't ask you this question that I usually ask people. 
when you were thinking about moving to the UK, you probably researched different options of the visas that you can get, right? So why did you decide to get this uh, visa that was called Exceptional Talent? I think that this is like even more uh, intimidating than the current name. Uh, why did you decide to go for it, even though it was so new, it seemed so difficult probably to get and there wasn't as much information? Yeah, um, again, I mean, my it, it was my engineering brain again. So I, I I tried to break it into problems, series of problems, and try to solve it. Uh, so I had a I had a family, a uh, wife who is also working, and a, and a kid. Uh, I, I need to ensure that the career for both my mine and my, my wife uh, continues well, right? That's one. Secondly, my kid gets a good education, decent education. Uh, is is also thing. So this these are my requirements. So and this this form the problem area. So now how do how do I solve them? Which country? Uh, the option is looking at uh, the countries which which are which are open in terms of accepting. Uh, one secondly, countries with uh, which do have uh, a decent technical technology uh, community. Uh, and then decent company companies. I mean, technology companies where you can actually build a career out there. All right. So when when you look at this, there are there are options like uh, United States is is obviously a good option. UK obviously is, is a good option. You have Canada, Australia, uh, and then countries like Australia, Germany, France. France may not be that much, but I think Germany definitely yes. Uh, so these are some of the options. So I looked at all this, and um, and then it came down to uh, mostly United States and UK. Uh, United States, as, as I stated, um, it probably is, is is kind of a lottery. That means you you go in there. I mean, the, the the selection itself is a lottery. I don't know how many know that the selection process itself is a lottery. After you get through the lottery, again getting to a situation where both husband and wife are in the same place working. Is again a lottery. It's not. It's not easy. So uh, it, it takes time to settle down, uh, and then that probably will have some impact on the, the kid kid as well. So, so the, these were some of the equations I saw in US when I came. When I looked at UK, um, it had it did not have all those complexities. Uh, but one thing that helped me decide for UK is is the global talent visa. I mean, which is which is called mm -hmm. different previously, but I, I will use the word global. Yeah. Talent. So when I looked at UK, the global talent visa was on. Again, I started looking, <clears throat> hey, is it feasible? Can I get it? Um, <clears throat> the more I looked at it, it became pretty clear that, hey, I think I can get it. But what I need to do is, I don't have to go and say I'm Superman or Spider-Man, but what I have to do is I have to understand what they need and provide exactly what they need. And I think it should work out. So it, it, worked, it worked out. Uh, the endorsement was the process, which takes probably a month i would say uh, and wherein i think there were the, there were uh, four organizations which actually endorsed you i think the, the three or four at the time there's a university there's a tech city and there's uh, two, two or three different organizations now i think it's only one or two um, so all, all of them had to endorse and say hey this is a guy uh, this is a person we need uh, within uk and we had to take that letter and go for it so i think that that was a process mm -hmm. In my case, so coming back to why, I mean, the answer was this. I, I studied and it became pretty clear. I can really solve this problem uh, in UK. And UK was stick. Yeah. Uh, and you decided, hey, if UK didn't work, the, Canada was also not a bad option. I mean, I'm not uh, not saying it's not a bad option. It, it was. Uh, it was it was a consideration as well. Because the process is pretty similar in, to UK. You, a, a person goes there. Uh, for five years and then gets a permanent residency, I think. So in Canada, which is a pretty similar setup, but I think in here in global talent, you a person can, um, yeah, I think it's it's only three years, I believe, right? It's it's only yeah. three years, uh, two more years. Uh, I mean, showing that you are here for five years and then uh, the person gets uh, ILR, I think, ILR and then the citizenship. So it's, it's easier. So that's how I decide. And that's why I decided for UK. And it worked out well. Yeah. Yeah. So the only thing that I wanted to clarify is that right now, when it comes to endorsement, there is one organization that endorses people who apply in the field of digital technology. So if you're listening to this and you work in tech, 
your uh, documents will be reviewed by uh, an organization called Tech Nation, and they kind of make uh, the endorsements for candidates. And there are two stages in the process. So the first process, the first stage is where you submit all of your documents, the letters, the your CV, all of the supporting documents. You submit it, and they review them, and they tell you whether you are good enough for the visa or not. And this part is not um, an immigration process. It's just the first stage. Uh, so why this is important? It's important because if you are not sure whether you qualify, but you want to try and see whether you can uh, get it, then there is no risk in trying. Since this is not an immigration process, there can be a situation where you get rejected and it influences your further chances of getting a visa to the UK. So there is no connection between the home office and technician. So if you are interested in trying uh, to apply for the visa, I think that there is little to lose in this process. You just lose the money that you pay for the endorsements, but it's uh, 450 pounds. So I don't think that this is a crazy amount of money uh, if there is a chance for you to get the visa. But yeah, I think that a lot of my guests mentioned the benefits of the Global Talent Visa, that this is a visa that leads to permanent residence in the UK, then to a British passport. Not every visa has this route to passport. So I think that if you are looking to get here and to live here, you should always make sure that you understand what is the visa that you have? What does it mean for you in the future? If you really want to get the passport as quickly as possible, uh, and it is your priority, for instance, like you have a bad passport uh, and you want to get a, a nice one very quickly, as quickly as possible. I do believe that the UK has one of the best paths to citizenship. So, uh, and Global Talent Visa gets you to that point um, quicker than a work visa. Not like terribly quicker, but still you get the permanent residency in just three years, ex ex uh, except for five years. So, um, I was also curious to hear your opinion about your impressions about the UK. So you've lived uh, in how many, like three or four countries before you moved here. So what is uh, your impression of the UK uh, since then? Obviously you're still living here, so <laughs> I guess that you liked it. Uh, but what is you know the biggest difference, like the biggest advantage that you see in the UK compared to other countries? Yeah, good question. I, I... Yes, I need to think a bit. <laughs> so I've <I, laughs> in quite a bit, quite a few countries. I mean, uh, United States a, a bit intermittently. I think few six months or so, few times. It's not. It's not in one big stretch. So um, uh, as South Korea, uh, Germany, France as well a bit. Um, yeah. Uh, one, one thing that stands out in United in UK personally for me is me and my wife have been all along pretty comfortable with English English as a language uh, right I mean mm -hmm. if you think that uh, the the options are narrowed down United States United Kingdom UK I mean Australia and probably to a certain extent uh, greater extent Canada as well these are the four options um I mean it so that 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 pillar of being comfortable in 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 uh, communicating probably is important. So that in, when when I look at that pillar, UK satisfies that. Now coming to the second pillar in terms of uh, schooling and my wife getting a decent job, a uh, job she likes, she's also taking. Uh, UK can do that. It did that. Uh, my wife, uh, my son, my son is pretty happy with the school here. So he's he's, he's, he's pretty happy. So that part is done. Now coming to the personal careers um so when i came uh, i made a conscious effort to work only with startups uh because i in my career previously i had worked with enormously huge companies for example samsung i was working on a specific phone uh, mobile phone which was being released in i think 2010 uh the, the it, it made more than 10 million sales so uh, if, if you're working in companies like that, um, you, you, the, the, the software and the hardware are, are things that you work on, uh, it, it impacts a lot of people. Uh, and, and, and then these are huge companies, I mean, Bosch as well. Uh, I made a conscious effort uh, that when I uh, move to a different country, I should also be looking at options to uh, work in startups and options to say if I can start my own startup. 
right? So when I looked at these these parameters, uh, London was a good option. So London mm -hmm. is, uh, I think, among um, the entire Euro. Uh, I think next to US, I think London is the place where the, there are more startups, more startups which are successful, more startups which are getting a lot of funding, right? So London has a pretty good hub uh, and the ecosystem for uh, technology, uh, venture capitalists, and, and then the accelerators who actually help these uh, companies, the startups to um, move from MVP uh, or probably the idea to probably an MVP or probably to uh, to take take it to the hands of the customers. I think the accelerators are there in, in London. They're, they're playing a good role. Um, so when I looked at all this, London was a good choice. So I, I, I UK, UK itself is a good choice, but in particular London, definitely. So this ecosystem, uh, uh, along with that, um, if, if I look at the companies, there are some decent companies sitting here in London. And and when and in fintech, uh, I think we have only three: New York, London, and Hong Kong, so which are playing an extraordinary role uh, across the globe. And London is is equally good. Um, and um, probably Hong Kong uh, is, is not sustaining now. It's it's, it's only New York and London. Uh, people said uh, many many said that. Uh, because of Brexit, London will lose uh, the fintech edge, but it did not happen. So my previous startup before I came to Meta was was a fintech based startup. It's something mm -hmm. we were on. Uh, but yeah, I mean, the the we, we started during COVID. We did not know COVID will happen, but we started, and then COVID happened, and, and because of that, I mean, uh, I, I moved to Meta anyway. So. Yeah. All these uh, fintech, uh, the the startups ecosystem, uh, the companies, good companies. If if something doesn't work, I need I need a backup plan. Backup plan is what I mean, getting into a good company and then build up a career again, and then be uh, be in a good situation and then be adventurous again, right? So these things can be tried out, uh, probably in Silicon Valley or in some places in other places in US as well. And then London was yeah. the option. So I think these these are the things that made me to think, hey. Uh, that's a good place. Let me try. Yeah, I agree. I think that London is really, it's its like, I think it's the best place in this part of the world. Uh, I don't want to say Europe because a lot of people here would say that, you know, Great Britain is not really Europe. It's something different. But in this part of the world, I think it's one of the best places where you can go if you are interested in building a career. And I agree with you that there are a lot of opportunities when it comes to working in startups, in starting your own startup, or, you know, if, it, if you fail in a startup, then there is always an opportunity to find a job quickly because there are just so many companies hiring. Um, and um, yeah, I think that it's hard to think of another place that is as welcoming to immigrants as London is. It's just such a diverse place. And I think that if you decide to be an immigrant and if you decide to leave your home, there is, I couldn't think of a place that would be more welcoming and pleasant to live in um, more, you know, more than London. So uh, I personally am really happy that I moved here and uh, I'm kind of guessing that your experience here has been, uh, you know, friendly and comfortable um, as well. I think that this is something that I hear from a lot of immigrants who moved here, even from people who before they moved to London, they lived in some European capitals. They say that London is just something else and kind of... Um, just a nice place to be an immigrant is what I'm trying to say, I guess. Uh, so you have clearly been very successful in your career, both before you moved to London and then after you moved to London. Uh, could you share maybe some tips for people listening to this who are interested in coming here and building a career in the UK? What are your tips on succeeding in building a career working in tech here? Yeah. Um... Good, good question again. So uh, my tips would be, uh, I, th I think any, anyone who's trying something new has to give themselves at least two years. Uh, so don't be disheartened by, hey, things did not work out in a, in a month or so, uh, right? This is one one, one, one tip, which helped, which helped me a lot. Uh, and I, I think it probably will be helpful. The, the, the amount of time itself is something which is, uh, which people can choose. Uh, uh, it may be one year for them, six months, or two years, 
it's depending on uh, the comfort factor, but we, but we need to give ourselves uh, a, a time duration and then probably not look back until you probably go till the time duration, right? So this is something which probably would be helpful in many cases. Um, secondly, the second tip would be, be very clear on way, or what, what do you want to do? So when you have uh, this time duration, you also have to be very clear. Hey, uh, I, I want to be in a, you have to write for yourself or probably be, be uh, put it in your head saying, hey, by the end of a month, I want to be in a position where uh, I, I can get into, so if you want to build a career, I can get into these A, B, C, D companies given it to you and I will not fit. So I want to get into that position. Let me do this in a month. And then I will keep on trying this for the three months. And by the end of three months, I should have something. So this this, this is what I say. Give yourself time and then give have us have a plan. Uh, be very clear what you want to do. So the, those things, uh, th th those would be very important uh, in, in terms of achieving. Secondly, the and thirdly, uh, the few things that, that have to be done uh, to, to be successful in your plan, which is networking. Go and talk to people, uh, meet people. Um, and uh, when it, in any country, any place, um, networking helps. So, um, I mean, so it, 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 it's very important to talk to people, know people, uh, and and you, you never know. I mean, opportunity may uh, may kick in. Um, they, you may um, identify something which is very helpful for you, which may build your career. So, uh, I would say that networking. And, and probably uh, along with that, which which may may not be extremely important for the career, but uh, I, I strongly believe is um, go and explore the places here. So go go around, understand the country, embrace the culture. You know what's happening. So the, so 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 that will help you a lot, not in getting the job or starting your career. But if you want to sustain that career for the longer run, you need to know the place. You need to know the people. You need to know why certain things are happening. Uh, ultimately, at the end of the day, you need to be smart, right? I mean, if you want to be smart, uh, you need to do a few things to be smart. Um, otherwise, I mean, the world is a place where everyone wants to be smart. So why why, did, why someone has to be at the back? So there, you, you'll be smart, do these things. Uh, there might be a few more things that you might already be doing, which, which is helping you continue that. Um, and I can talk about this a lot, like the podcast, read books, etc. This This is all <laughs> places but i think these are fundamental things so three or four fundamental things that mm -hmm. uh would be very helpful yeah. yeah yeah i agree i agree that networking is so important uh especially if you move to a big city where you don't know anybody so this is what happened to me i came here i didn't know anybody but i i did build quite a, a lot of uh, new connections during this year that i've spent here and i think that it's important for people who are coming in to understand that um, a lot of opportunities in life, most of opportunities in life, they actually come from weak connections. So from people that you just met somewhere and that you maintain a relationship with. So um, there is always an opportunity that something might come your way, just as you said, because you met somebody somewhere at a conference, at a meetup or at work or anywhere like that. So um, do make sure that you're meeting new people consistently and expanding your network. What would you say is the best place to, the best way to build your network if you're moving to London? What has helped you most? Was it like meetups, conferences, or work-related events, or some something something else? Uh, it, it was meetups. It was meetups. There were quite a few meetups that were happen. Uh, there are conferences as well, but meetups are more casual, uh, right? I mean, you may, you may not really get. Uh, some of the CEOs, CTOs, or, or big shots from startups coming in to meet us. But but we, but if the startup is a pretty small startup, it's a three member, four member startups. You you may meet those people. You may meet those founders there. Uh, but if it's a, if, if the startup is, is is a medium sized one, say I mean uh, fifty and more, you may not see uh, the founders there. Um, if for for that uh, conferences trade shows, there, there are quite a few that do happen. So going to them really helps. Um, there are, um, I think in Canary Wharf, there is this, um, there's this building Volumpiard, I think. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm missing that name. Huge trade shows that do happen. I mean, the, uh, the, IIT, the IoT world, um, quite a few uh, trade shows that do happen. Going, I mean, uh, these startups, along with their foreigners, do come and set up their stalls. 
saying, hey, I'm, I'm building this profiler, I'm building this uh, software, I'm building this um, uh, cybersecurity thing. Uh, so good, good opportunity to, to see hey, what's really is happening. How, you know, probably is, is there a possibility to, to make uh, make some connect or to think, hey, um, there's a lot happening in cybersecurity. Let me jump in into that area. I mean, I've done a bit of work. Why not do more and get into that domain? You may, you may get interested. Uh, so I think those are things. Mm-hmm. I would say meetups, um, conferences, trade shows. If you want more closer more casual meetups. Uh, I, I went to quite a few meetups. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah and, I think meetups uh, are very popular here and there are so many of them happening every day. <laughs> I, I, I think we need to choose which one we can and we, we want to. Um, for example, even in my case, I, I, I couldn't go every day. So probably it might be, I make it a point to go at least once a week, uh, a minimum once a week, twice a week. Mm-hmm. Once. So wanted to see, I, I, my focus when I came to UK was IoT, Internet of Things. Uh, 2016, uh, I uh, was consulting a company which was building an Internet of, uh, uh, I, I, IoT cooler, which is basically a connected cooler. So you know what's happening inside the cooler, outside the cooler, um, sitting anywhere in the world. So uh, uh, my, my area was focused on was IoT. and uh, So I went to quite a few meetups on IoT. So got to know what's happening. Who are those good? Who are those players who want to come in? What are the startups trying to build um, in in London? So these are things we we get to know. We don't have to go and talk to all the people and take notes. It's it's, it's about casual chats, uh, two two to three minutes casual chats with um, eight to ten people. So that can be easily done. So it's 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 not rocket science. It's it's easily done. Uh, so yeah, meetups meetups are helpful. Mm-hmm. And, we need yeah, to yeah, definitely. go to the go to only those which might be interesting mm-hmm. yeah definitely so for those watching live we are getting close to the end of the stream so i'll be kind of rounding up with my final questions right now so if you have questions and you have waited until last moment to ask them please make sure to ask questions about moving to the uk uh building a startup in the uk or working for big tech in the uk because we have a guest here who has experience with um all of those topics but also if you're watching this in recording you can also ask a question in the chat and um we'll try to answer them later so since you have experience working with startups uh and in general uh, you're knowledgeable about the space um could you share some tips on generally for somebody who wants to come here and build their own startup and what kind of support can they expect to find here what is helpful what should they know about and uh yeah, generally anything that you can share about that experience of building a startup here in London. Yeah, I, I will. I'll be pretty specific about UK. I, I, I can talk about uh, in, in generics about startup. I think that will take probably I can take another sixty minutes on building a startup, but specific to UK uh, because we are talking of global talent visa and people coming to UK and building something here. Um, what does UK offer? Um, I think global talent visa itself is a, is a good thing uh, if if somebody wants to build a startup. The reason is there's there's this other kind of visa which is called the work visa or something um, where a person is tied to a specific company. That means you had to work for a company, but but the flexibility of the uh, global talent visa is um, you decide which company you want to and you 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 can build your own startup so that's the flexibility so with the global talent visa we can talk of uh, people coming here and uh, setting up their own startup so uh, number one that that's what global talent visa offers secondly the quite a few uh, funds the government funds in uk uh, which is available for uh, good startups and uh, why why that uh, uk consciously wants to encourage uh, technology uh, being being created in UK, technology being um, uh, built in UK and exported possibly from here. So they they are pretty conscious of that. And how how can they actually encourage and motivate people to actually jump into the startup game and then build? Uh, they actually de-risk the startup by actually offering some money. Uh, that means if if you if you are uh, building a startup and you you actually there are many many 
uh, forums where uh, funding is available. Innovate UK is a very good example. Uh, I used uh, Innovate UK in, in one of my uh, projects in, in a company. We were quite successful. We got funds from uh, from UK UK government. Uh, and uh, I think you know, Innovate UK, I mean, people who are interested can look at Innovate UK, go and pitch to Innovate UK, uh, write your proposal saying, hey, we want to do this. Uh, how 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 different it is? How are you differentiating from what is in the market? Uh, why do you think you will be successful? If you are able to write all this, um, and if you are able to convince, I think the funds are available. So this is something which is available. Um, and thirdly, I mean, I mean, we talked about the visa. We talked about what government offers. Third, third and important thing is again, I will come come back to the network and the meetups. The amount, if you, if you go to these these events, the amount of um, the, the the type of discussions and and uh, that are happening there, uh, in most cases they are very very motivating. So you you see people who who came in, build something. Uh, and you 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 can probably look at examples. Hey, I I saw that guy. He he came there. He he uh, he did this this this. He failed, and then he tried a different thing. He succeeded. I mean that probably is a good success example, right? So these these kind of things are easy to uh, easy to see, and you can see more of them uh, in London because London is a is, is one city where a lot of things are happening. But you can actually see them and hear hear such stories. That it happened. Uh, that was one of the reasons I actually started my own startup, uh, hearing to few success stories. Um, yeah, I think so those. So you. Those, yeah. yeah. So you weren't really uh, planning to start a startup before you came here, and it's just being here inspired you to try. Is it? Is it what happened? Yeah, I mean, when I came here, uh, I had I had uh, thought I had made a conscious effort of working for startups because before coming here, I was working for bigger companies. I decided, hey, mm -hmm. I will work for startups. Uh, I want to uh, uh, I want to see the startup ecosystem. I wanted to work for startups. So I, I worked for startups. I consulted a few startups, worked for a few startups. Then I got motivated into um, building my own startup. Um, and, and it again happened through a few meetups, meeting more people. I had this crazy idea on, on, on fintech in the area of fintech. London is is hub for fintech. Uh, met one of the co-founders who, who who was my co-founder. We were we were two founders. Uh, we we thrashed the idea. We 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 tried to see how how it can be improved. What can be done? What's available in the market? And came out with some 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 thoughts on what should be done. Um, yeah, um, so that I mean, there were a lot of motivational stories. I mean, uh, to, before we started that, um, mm -hmm. uh, and the advantage of starting that, I mean, I'm, I'm not saying I'm successful because of the startup, because it was COVID and we 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 had some issues with venture capitalists opening up their wallets at that time. Uh, but we decided, hey, I mean, uh, I I will probably come out of the startup. Um, I'm in Meta right now. Um, but uh, the startup journey itself was pretty eventful. I got to meet a lot and a lot of people who could be potential customers uh, for us. So this, and right, and it's, the, the journey itself is a lesson. I mean, you, you learn a lot uh, in the journey. It was, so I said it was a uh, year or year and a half, I think. Uh, it was a good journey, yeah. Amazing. Uh... This is an incredible story. I hear those stories of people who move here without even thinking about uh, joining startups or starting their own business and then they join a big company. But then since they are in London and maybe they go to meetups and they hang out with people who have their own businesses and they start thinking about it and they kind of discover this entrepreneurial spirit within them that they didn't really have before. And I think that this is one point that I'm also trying to make with London is that this is a place where which has a very strong energy that for me personally is very motivating. It's this place where things are happening. And also there is another point is that London is one of the most expensive cities on earth. So you are really encouraged uh, from, you know, externally to hustle really hard to, in order to uh, make it in the city. So there is a lot of um, you see a lot of evidence everywhere outside of you that things are possible, that it's possible to build wealth, that it's possible to be successful. And this is the energy that I think is not really there in many places uh, in Europe, at least in my opinion.
So it is interesting to hear that your experience has been uh, so positive and uh, just just a great experience living in London. And I hope that people watching this will uh, find this encouraging. And I also wanted to just emphasize once again that the things that are possible here for uh, for guests that join to join me on, on the streams. A lot of them are really helped and enabled by the fact that the people had the global talent visa. Because as you uh, mentioned, if you have the skilled worker visa, which is the visa that ties you to your employer, there is really no way for you to also have a startup on the site. You are not allowed to register your own company. Uh, I've heard that it's possible, but you need a lawyer. But technically, the work the work visa is not really meant for you to go out there and also have a business. And then uh, if you have a startup visa, you are allowed to work for somebody. But then the issue with the startup visa is that it's only for two years. It doesn't lead to a permanent residence. It doesn't lead to a passport. And then you need to switch to something else. With the global talent visa, you get one visa that gives you a way and a roadmap to have a permanent residence and to have a passport. So it is technically a residence permit that gives you this freedom to really think what you want to achieve. So if you want to work for a big company, you can go do that. If you want to have a startup, you can go do that as well. You can also work for a big company and do something on the side and have a little side hustle on the side that can maybe work, grow into a big business, maybe not. But there is this freedom to explore. Also, you can just kind of do occasional consulting gigs. You can go study at university. You can maybe take a sabbatical from work and just do nothing for a while. Um, and all of this is possible thanks to this visa. So it is pretty amazing. I think so. That's why I'm uh, happy to be talking about it and sharing information about it uh, with my viewers. Um, so we have a question in chat. Um, the question is uh, for you, Harsha, what difference do you see between London and North America? Yeah, it's a, it's a pretty good question. So, I mean, I came today morning from New York. Uh, once a day, I can relate very closely with London is New York. It's the same kind of energy. Um, you, you see, um, it, it's, it's also a packed city. New York is also a packed city. Uh, it's, it's, it's actually an island, uh, right? Manhattan is actually an island. Uh, it's a packed city, uh, a lot of talent, lot, lot, lots happening. Uh, it's also a fintech hub, like London, London, New York, or fintech hub. Um, so apart from that, if you, if you look at California, California is, is a place that there's a lot of technologies happening. Um, uh, uh, Google, Meta, they're all headquarters there. Headquartered there. So, um, but it's widely spread. California itself is a huge state, uh, right? Um, and right, it's uh, the companies are widely spread. So you don't see that kind of a uh, close action. But you, if you, if you know the places to go, if you know what to do, you will see a lot happening uh, in California for sure. Lot, lot happening. But, um, but yeah, I, I think yeah, that, that that's what I can say. New York is one city which I can closely, very closely uh, relate to, uh, London um, and and other other others other states like California and uh, even Texas has few now. I think people are moving to Florida uh, and and Seattle is is is, is good as well. So if you have been to these places, I mean, if you, if you look at look at these, um, the amount of energy you, you 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 may see, but I think you need you need to know where to go. It's, it won't be mm -hmm. as easy as here in London. Hey, I, I looked at I looked at uh, meetups.com or whatever and, and say, hey, I mean, this, these are things that are happening. I know I will go. Uh, it won't be as easy as that, but uh, it will take time. Uh, but, but those are happening places. But the primary thing that you need to ask yourself is uh, what is it that you want? In my, in, my, in my case, as I mentioned, I had these three problems that I had to solve. And I want to look at the place which will solve those problems. Um, and uh, London was the place which are solving that, including, uh, I mean, uh, if I if I want to add the fourth problem, which is about being able to get uh, an ILR and a citizenship very quickly. So if I add that as a fourth problem, it was not a problem for me. But if I add that as a problem, then I think London is the only place, or UK is the only place, uh, right? So to be in, um, yeah, uh, that, that's. I hope I answered your question. Um, US is definitely a good place, a very nice place. 
uh, but you need to be very clear about what you want. Um, that, that, that's a part. Yeah, I think that a lot of people, they a lot of software engineers actually have this dream and kind of end goal to come to the United States, but then they spend a couple of years trying to get through the lottery of the work visa. And then eventually they just give up and kind of decide, okay, what is the second best thing? And they come to London and then uh, a lot of them discover that it's actually a great place for your career and for life. I think that another thing that I've heard from people comparing the United States and London is that in London, it's easier to have uh, a lifestyle that allows you to combine working in a big city, but also London, London gives you access to nature, which is important and cool because London is kind of at the same time a big city, but also it does feel like a village in most of its neighborhoods. Um, so there is always access to greenery and squirrels and foxes and all that fun stuff. Um, yeah. And yeah, at the same time, you are in the center of everything, but also you kind of have can have a lifestyle that is very relaxed, especially now, I think, as we work remotely and you don't have to commute. So I think that if you do have to commute every day, then it is definitely a pretty stressful place. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I think one, one of the other things that I want to add about London is... Uh, for a couple of years, I stayed slightly away from London, not inside London. Uh, and uh, you have that option because the tubes are pretty good here. So I was yeah. at the edge of metropolitan line at a place called Amsterdam. Um, stayed there for a couple of years. It's a pretty nice place. So you're not inside London. You're, you're outside. And beautiful views and beautiful uh, woods uh, and, and greenery in Buckinghamshire. Uh, it was amazing. So you have those options. Can you do that? In, uh, you, you can do that in uh, US as well, but because it's already spread. But can you do that in New York? Not really. Because if you if you want to go out of New York, then it's ocean, right? It's it's an island. So so that's the uh, yeah yeah definitely. Um, but yeah, I'm biased. I'm such a London fan that. <laughs> Um, yeah, so I don't think we have any more questions. As I said, if you have any more follow-up questions, ask them in the comments. We'll get, we'll try to answer them later. Um, and yeah, that's all I had planned for today. Thank you so much, Harsha, for being here. Thank you so much for answering um, my questions and also sharing your experience. I think that we've all learned quite a lot from you and got inspired, uh, you know, about getting the visa, about building a career in London. And I hope that this uh, stream was useful and inspiring for others as well. If you're interested in the topic of the global talent visa, in the topic of moving to the UK and building a career here as a tech professional, make sure to subscribe to the channel. I plan to release more videos like this in the future and also explain our videos uh, about the topic of getting the visa. So I uh, will be happy to see you join the channel. Thank you so much, Harsha, once again. It was my pleasure. Thanks. Thank you. And thanks for watching, everybody. Bye. Have a nice evening. Bye, everyone.